is it possible to become a mom and pop landlord, real estate investor, housing provider, whatever you want to call it? Is it possible to become one of those in the state of California on a moderate budget? I don't think so. Let's talk about it. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks, the show where I work with investors from all over the place. Today, we're going with my man, Adam. Adam's in California. Adam, you're an architect. And you're getting into real estate investing, right? <clears throat> you're trying to become mom and pop landlord, right? Trying to start your own small business in addition to your day job, okay? And you're in California. And I think a lot of people watching your episode, your show right now, are in the same boat as you, man. You're feeling the pinch of California, dude. You're feeling uh, the tidal wave of sadness that is living in California trying to start a real estate business, right? You have housing prices that are just obviously the highest in the world, right? If if not, they're very close, right? They're like one of the most expensive places in the world, right, to get housing, right? I get it. There's a lot of cool stuff going on there, right? But uh, it's very expensive, which makes it near impossible for you to get started on a moderate budget, right? Like today, I'm going to be showing you a triplex that's only going to cost you about 30 grand out of your pocket. I'm at everybody who's watching this. Show, everybody sitting at home on their iPhone right now with their underwear on. It's like, ah, 30 grand. They just dropped their phone, right? Probably hitting the toilet because they're, they're in the bathroom taking a. Anyway, it's impossible to get cheap properties out there in Cali. That's one problem that I, that I, I think is very tough for mom and pop landlords to deal with. The second problem is the government, right? I don't want to get on my soapbox about how much I want to uh, crotch kick liberals, but if you're trying to run a real estate investment business, folks, and that was a joke, a very funny one, but it was still a joke. The fact of the matter is, it's, it's sometimes when the landlord's rights are stripped away and the laws are way too tenant favorable, uh, like they are in California, it becomes almost impossible to start or grow or run a profitable uh, landlording business. It's just, it's fact, okay? Like, if that offends you, if you're triggered, dude, I'm sorry. It's fact, right? Like, whoever you voted for, it doesn't matter to me. I will still work with you to invest in real estate. But you have to comprehend that the government's role in the real estate business is very important because how evictions are handled, how property inspections are handled, what you can and can't do as a landlord, the amount of money you can charge for things, right? These are all important factors in your business and the profitability of your business. And right now in the climate in California, guys like Adam are getting crushed and guys like Adam just can't do business. You need to have super deep pockets, which you do not, Adam. So that's why he came to me and I am here to help you Get a triplex in a red market for only about 30 G's out of your pocket. And uh, before I get into that real quick, everybody else watching the show, you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, get this kind of one-on-one detailed analysis, and then have my team handle your investment on the ground after the fact. Shoot us an email. Click the show notes below. Uh, we'll start working with you like this. Book you a call. Get you started like we have with Adam because this property you're all about to watch, uh, I only release it publicly on Hopewise TV after the deals are done, right? So... If you ain't Adam, you ain't seen this live. This house ain't even for sale anymore. So let's jump into it. Two, please. Welcome back, folks. This, this is what you're paying for. Let me stretch. Let me get a little, oh, a little, little stretch in there, you know, because this, this is where we roll up our sleeves and we see how the sausage is made, right? Any 
jerk off on the internet can uh, say, hey, buy properties out here in the Cleveland market because they're cheaper, right? Anybody could do that. But just because it's cheap doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make money, right? It is my goal to try to mitigate your risks of money loss as much as possible. So I want to give you all the information I possibly can so you can make an appropriate informed investment decision, right? I understand uh, the Cleveland market is new to you. That's why I'm here, right? I have sold over $200 million worth of real estate, run the largest scattered site rental portfolio of its kind, right? We're the one-stop shop for investors, okay? One-stop shop. Starts here, due diligence process, identifying properties that I think will make sense, right? Then after the sale, my team, we handle the property management. We do insurance, right? We do insurance everywhere in Ohio, right? So if you are watching this show right now and you have a rental property anywhere in Ohio, I can almost guarantee you I could save you money on your premium, right? Uh, reach out to us. We'll give you a uh, no obligation quote because all we do is landlord policies, right? So, like, don't ask us for a quote on your boat or your car. We ain't in that game, right? Just rental properties. Now, insurance, check. Property management, check. Maintenance, check. Renovations, check. Landscaping, check. But back to where it all begins, right? Due diligence. Understanding what you're getting, okay? Unbiased assessments. This is not my house. I don't own this house. The seller hasn't hired me to sell this house to you. You have hired me to break it down, see if it will fit your investment goals. So that's what we're going to do. 518 Lake Ave, Elyria, 44035. It's been on the market for 20 Three days. The price, $122,500. I like this property quite a bit, but I don't like the price. We only have two photos. That is unfortunate, but it is par for the course when you're investing in real estate, folks. Tenant-occupied uh, properties, notoriously difficult to get inside to get photos. But I will say I do believe the listing agent and the seller were a little lazy on this one because it's occupied by two tenants, but it is actually a triplex. There is a third teeny tiny unit above the garage. It's like 300 square feet, something like that, a little one-one. Uh, it's vacant, so I don't know why they didn't give us pictures. So I don't know what's going on with that. We'll have to figure that out. Um, as we go further down the due diligence process, I'm assuming it's going to need a little bit of repair. Uh, probably nothing major. I'm sure you're doing just like a quick turn, right? But it's kind of irrelevant because it's almost priced in like free. You're really not paying for that unit, right? Now, 122.5 is what they're asking. I don't think we need to pay 122.5. I think the appropriate price here is going to be 115k. Now, if we're getting like just a standard duplex out here. Like, dude, we're probably looking at like 100K for this because uh, each, e each of the units in the duplex has three beds, one bath, right? And those are going to generate huge rents, 850 a month, okay? And then it's almost like we're getting that third unit for free, right? Like 15K is basically all I'm really adding on to that is what I think we need to pay for it, right? And that one, after we fresh it up, we'll get about 550, right? So market rents on this sucker, 2,250 or 27K for the year, right? But this is what... Uh, different rates, Holton Wise, Holton Wise TV, James Wise, whatever you want to call it, right? Whatever you want to call me in this service, what we do here. This is where it differentiates us from like other turnkey providers, right? I'm not going to just tell you, oh, you're going to make 27 k a year. That's bang and let's do the deal. No, there's costs associated, right? So if you break that down, right, this is the chart. Show you your fixed and variable expense performance estimates, folks, of the 27 k you're really only going to be making a profit of about 13820 right? And then if we get it at my desired price point, $115K, you put down 32 bank kicks in 86 right? That projects out to a 29.4% cash on cash return. Sounds sweet. We're not done, though, right? Let's get back to some other real-world things we need to discuss, right? That 29.4% return would be if we can get the existing two tenants up to market rent, if we could get a third tenant in that garage unit, garage apartment unit, without any renovation. I don't think that uh, either of those are impossible, but I don't think either of those scenarios are likely. Here's what we have, but this is actually pretty freaking sweet. Uh, the two tenants in the duplex are actually super long-term tenants. One tenant has been there for 22 years and the other for 10. Their rents are 595 and 5 and a quarter. Did I tell you this? I'd rather... 
have a tenant in the property for 22 years at 595, uh, then get market rent and change my tenants every couple of years. You will make more money with the 22 year tenant because where you really lose your booty in this business is turning units over all the time. So what we don't want to do is immediately go to 850 because we don't want to lose those super consistent tenants. Folks, 22 year tenants are not common. Do not anticipate buying a property like this in the Cleveland market in what I would call a blue collar area, like a C grade area, CB area. Do not anticipate buying something similar to this and getting a 22 and a 10 year tenant. That is an amazing run. You want to do whatever you can to keep those tenants. So what I like to do in situations like this is keep their rent the same for the first year and then slowly bump it up. Right. The goal should be to eventually get them at or around market rent without a turnover. Because, dude, they've been there 22 years, bro. Like, 22 years? Like, if you think you're just going to sweep up when they leave and the next tenant's going to come in and pay $850, you are out of your mind. Right? You got to do a full turn, right? Walls, carpet, uh, new fixtures, the kitchen, the bath, the whole shebang, right? You're looking at at least 10 k right? So you want to try to keep them in there, right? So it's going to take us a while to get up to those market rents. And then, of course, at the inspection, we'll have to figure out what's uh, the situation with that little garage unit. But again, it's almost a freebie, really. I'm only putting a $15,000 value on it because if we were getting a duplex here, 3131, we'd probably have to pay 100 for it anyway, right? So uh, if the garage unit was all jacked up, I mean, you could honestly just not do anything with it and just rock this as a duplex, right? It makes cash uh, with just the two tenants, right? So all in all, Super solid deal, right? I like where it's at. Uh, the next step, of course, is to put in an offer and then uh, go through the home inspection process, right? Some things you should know. We are not going to be anticipating brand new roof, furnace, or hot water tanks, right? I know people do the turnkey investing and they think they're going to get properties with those new stuff. Now, that's not how it works in the real world, right? Like maybe a turnkey provider that just buys foreclosures, renovates everything, and sells it to you, but they're selling it to you at a premium. If you're trying to buy stuff at or below market value, fair market value stuff, arm's length transaction properties, we're trying to beat this seller up, get a, a nice little discount. What is that, 7500 off of what they're asking for? In the real world, landlords don't do that kind of stuff, right? Think about it. A roof, it's like a $7,000 roof. They last about 30 years. Let's say this roof's 22 years old. Why in the hell would the landlord... Uh, pay seven grand to replace the roof when he's probably going to get eight years out of it, right? Uh, furnaces cost three Gs, last about 30 years. Hot water tanks cost about a G, last about 15 years, right? So you're going to get properties like this uh, with these mechanicals uh, in varying age cycles, usually towards the end of their life cycle is what's common, right? That's why on your chart, let's pull that chart back up. As you can see, the capital expenditures I have you saving 1350 a year, right? You're not actually spending that, but I told you your net operating income estimates only 13,820. Let's say you don't have to do furnaces, roof or hot water tanks for the next 5 years, right? You would have 1350 for 5 years, right? In your pocket, right? It's not like you're actually spending that, but I don't let you guys believe that that is pure cash flow because I know eventually the $7,000 bills coming, the $3,000 bills coming, the $1,000 bills coming, okay? Another thing why we're into the chart Repairs and maintenance, thirteen fifty, right? You know where you spend almost all of your repairs and maintenance money? Turnovers, right? This property happens to have a twenty-two year tenant and a ten year tenant, right? So fucking think about that, right? If you had thirteen fifty a year times twenty two years, that's an extra thirty grand, twenty nine thousand seven hundred dollars of repairs and maintenance you're likely not spending, right? That we're budgeting for, right? Think about that. That's why your 22-year tenants, even though they're paying a little under market rent, that's why you should focus on them versus like hitting your specific uh, metrics, right? Real estate, yes, it's a number of business, but it's also a people business and you got to play the hand you're dealt, right? And uh, make moves based on that, right? But all told, I think this is a super awesome investment and I'm super high on Elyria right now. Uh, it's west of Cleveland and I think we get a lot better deals in Elyria because the national folks are like just hammering Cleveland, 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 right? You see all these articles like what's the best turnkey rental market? And they say Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. But people out of state, they don't ever realize that there's like all these other uh, cities and suburbs around Cleveland. Greater Cleveland area has like two or three million people in it. Only like 350 or 60,000 of them live in the city of Cleveland, right? So there's a lot of fucking housing outside of the Cleveland city walls that a lot of people aren't paying attention to. And I also believe the government in Elyria is easier to deal with, more landlord friendly than the government in Cleveland, right? Like, in whole, at whole wise, we deal with like, I don't know, 30 different municipalities, right? 
Illyria is one of the most landlord friendly of them in the entire Cleveland market. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.